And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. One of the most iconic studios in the world, we take you on a tour. Imstafesta Toronto, AES New York, Pensado Awards 4, a brand new mix contest from Avid and Westlake Pro. You're at the place, it's Pensado's place. Yay. A lot of mix contests. That's some cool stuff. You know how much I love doing those. I know. It's it gives cool. us a barometer for kind of how we're doing with you guys. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for dropping by. Yep. You too, Herb. Thanks Thank for you. dropping by. No, thanks Sean Gore, thanks for dropping here. by. We're all happy to be here. Orlando, thanks for dropping by. Good. Orlando, Florida, or a human? <laughs> <laughs> My guy, Orlando. Absolutely. Shall we get to Let's it? Let's do it. All righty, guys. Hey, gang, it is great to be with you. Likes and subscribes, most appreciated. We are busy, 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 and a lot of it is thanks to these folks. 1500 or nothing, the Blackbird Academy, Westlake Pro, Avid, NAM, Heaviosity, Ooh. Lander, and Fab Factory. Ooh. Yeah, we got a couple new guys. Yeah, I like it. What about Heaviosity? Man, I, I'm, I'm just now learning a lot about them. They're a great company, enjoyed a lot of success in the composer space, and mm -hmm. now they're doing plugins and stuff for us guys over here in the in the in the caves around uh, LA. Pretty cool. Cool we're, stuff. Yeah, I got my hands on one. Love it. We're gonna be bringing more and more about them I in, hope the, in so. the future. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Cool. Absolutely. What about Nam? Um, same thing. Uh, Joe and Zach and Pete, and they got an amazing talent named Shalice. They are getting ready to be real funky. Wow. Uh, I can't really talk about Nam Jam yet, but I uh -oh. am. Oh, Nam Jam. Hold tight. Okay. There'll be more coming from them. But we're happy to have these folks on board. These are companies we like and respect, so you're yeah, going to be hearing sure. a lot more information Absolutely. about them. Uh, let's get to your calendars. August 20th at AES New York, 10 o'clock a.m., meet the amazing, the amazing Greg Wells. Uh, Dave and I will talk about all his work with folks like Katy Perry, Adele, one Republic, Keith Urban, 21 Pilots, Timberland. Um, you'll get techniques and secrets. Um, we'll answer your questions. And then we want to hang and say hello to you afterwards. AES generously has made it free for Pensado folks. Use this link and do not miss this. This dude's a genius. He's a hell of a nice guy and you will learn a ton. And Pensado Awards 4, host, check. Cosign, Samantha Maloney and CLA. Pro Committee, check. We got a big response. You can go to the landing page and see. And a whole bunch of really cool sponsors also check. People like Isotope, our boy Groove 3 with the genius Asa Doyle, IK Multimedia, and many, and many more. You'll see all those company names there. So you got to be there. Ticket, the tickets are open. They're coming in. It's going to be a ball. December 3rd, Henry Fonda Theater. Be there. Yes, sir. Okay, guys. Um, everybody calls me. December third mm -hmm. for tickets ain't gonna happen this year. You gotta you gotta hit us early. You gotta get when Herb says get get, get registered. Do that now. Don't call me the day before. Yeah, because we, we don't have we don't have any. <laughs> Poor Karen. Uh, they'll, they'll work it on. And now finally, on to one of the cool things about the show has been mixed contest. It, Dave made a point earlier that it allows us to see how you're growing mm -hmm. and companies get involved. So he's busy judging the Indaba contest. Yes. Those winners are going to be announced in two weeks. And then our folks at Avid and Westlake Pro, they're teaming up with a really cool artist named Butterscotch to offer you the Butterscotch We Are All We Got Remix Contest. Lots of prizes, lots of stuff. She's a super cool artist, and this is a great opportunity for you. We'll roll those details out next week. So, you know, one of the things that folks seem to enjoy is when we get a chance to go to the studio and show it. This, me, me more than anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this one's super legendary. Would you agree? Yeah. On, on, every, on any number of fronts. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, is when you say Capital Studios, the, what you denote are legendary customer service, legendary sessions, legendary gear, legendary artists. Uh, we got a chance to go over and talk to two of the bosses Paula Salvatore, our friend, uh, who with an amazing history that she has. Yeah. Arthur Kelm, who we got to know, he's also an amazing dude. And we took a really cool tour. Yeah. Please enjoy our visit yeah. at Capitol Studios. Oh, I 
you doing? I'm doing great, Dave. Paul nice Sal to have you here. Paul Salvatore, Art Kelm. Nice to meet you, my friend. Nice to meet you. Um, man, 60 years. Can you believe it? Yeah. I know, I know you haven't been here 60 years. No. But, but <laughs> 27. What, you've been here 27 years. Yeah, It's October. been that long since Sound City? Yep. Wow. That's crazy. That's cool. Yeah. Art, right, what are the changes that you've seen while you've been here? You, you saw the uh, interjection of the digital world and all that. How, yeah. How's Capital adapting to that? Uh, we're staying on the cutting edge, actually. I mean, uh, going back, I, I've been here five years only, and I came here to install this console as a project supervisor. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I stayed after it was in, because we, uh, we've redone Studio B. We re we've upgraded uh, Studio C with, with an 88R. So yeah. on that on that front, we've been staying solid in the analog recording console domain, but at the same time, staying on top of Pro Tools right up to the point of because yeah. uh, in the last month I've bought all new trash cans and Pro Tools 12.8. So wow. it's staying on the cutting edge of you know digital technology, but also marrying in analog technology that we know works and sounds good. Paula, we all know how famous and how incredible. The studios here are with, with string sections and, and the gear that you guys have amassed over the years. And the interesting thing about your equipment is you bought them all new and they still work amazing thanks <laughs> to the staff that Art has. Um, what are some changes in the types of client you're seeing? Are you seeing a lot more youth come in and, and do records? And, yeah. And if so, can you tell us about a couple of those? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of new artists like, you know, Dwight Yoakam's brought in a new artist to produce called King Leg. And, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, the uh, producers that are doing the new bands um, are, are coming in and they're just, you know, turning them on to the new capital experience, you mm -hmm. know. I think a lot of them are in awe of the things that we've done in the past, but they're bringing into the future. Like, you know, we, we work on a lot of big band records with Buble and Josh Groban and... Um, but, uh, you know, Ryan Adams is doing mm -hmm. a lot of stuff here. Talented, man. Yeah. I love Michael Bublé. That might surprise you, but I, I really oh, like yes. his work a lot. He had loops in the, uh, um, I still haven't found you yet. There's oh. loops in that song. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the Capital Experience, you called it that, and it truly is that. There's, um, there's a certain reverence that the minute you come in the front door that you just adopt, and it, and it you know, as you walk down the hallways, you can feel the, the, the giants that have been here. Yeah. Uh, how do you utilize that in terms of your relationship with the clients here? Well, um, we kind of make them feel at home, of course, mm -hmm. and make them feel that they are going to make their own history mm -hmm. and their own dream yeah, come quite true. Quite a few have, haven't they, yeah, since you've been Yeah, here. exactly. I mean, Josh Groban came in to sing a temp track for Bocelli uh, mm -hmm. at the Academy Awards. Uh -huh. and he's done a couple of records here already, so... And I can jump in on that to add in, is that, again, our, our, our theory is that this is a five-star hotel. It's a five-star hotel oh, wow. experience. So the, the staff is trained to be that way so that you know, everyone's friendly, pencils are sharpened. It's all attention to detail. I mean, that's the whole Herb and I have a friend that actually took her staff to one of the big hotels and had the hotel train the staff. As, <laughs> but that sounds like what you guys are doing, that's too. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's the experience. Definitely. I mean, that's yeah. the clientele we live with and, and, and cater to. So. Uh -huh. Again, this experience they have at, 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 at fine hotels should carry on through their recording experience with attention to detail and things work. And Yeah. Uh, to expand the conversation a little bit, not just with the studios, but the entire building, a lot of people don't know that on the tower there's a transmitter that transmits the word Hollywood in Morse code. It's a light, a red blinking light. Recently, um, it was transmitting stuff about the Olympics, uh, is what I heard Karen's with. That's what Karen said. Um, amazing. I, I mean, things like that, and yeah. then um, I always thought that the tower looked like a stack of records intentionally, but that wasn't true. There's just so many wonderful things about this building, and a lot of it's going to be here forever, right, because of the certain laws and certain historical yeah. elements to it. it. became a landmark in yeah. 2006. And and the, the chambers, the, the re reverb changer, chambers were, in, were close to having some sort of... Um, construction going on near them, and now that will never happen again. They're historical too, right? They're historical. Um, they did do construction and built an apartment building, but uh, they stayed within our regulations of sessions we needed to make, so they worked with us. Um, Studio A is our largest room, so it could fit up to a 45-piece um, orchestra. Wow. Um, but it also can just do solo drums or solo vocals. We have 
uh, one major booth for piano or drums, and then we have a booth next door to it mm -hmm. that can do vocalists mm -hmm. or guitarians or whatever. The best thing about Studio A is that you can see everything. You can see the booth, you could two booths, we have windows, they can see out there, and um, the, the, co the control room is large enough for big movie crowds. We do a lot of movie soundtracks, so a lot of people come in visit. And it's a really easy con control room for that. Uh, the 88R, it's a great console. Yes. Um, has the power and, to and, yeah, to do it. And then, then, uh, and then uh, yeah. acoustically, we can we can vary the walls because they're, they're all on little louvers. Right. So it can be a, a wood sound, mm -hmm. a more uh, metallic sound, and or if you open up straight, it's three and a half second decay, right? Something like yeah. that. They can set the decay, and again, you can then it can open up all the louvers up, and then it's just all soft walls. So. It's uh, it's it's acoustically variable for whatever, you, yeah, you, whatever your taste. And it looks good in parties. We do up lighting. We do showcases. <laughs> we do, as Adam Sandler um, wrote us in the script so that we film studio for his uh, Sandy Wexler movie, um, mm -hmm. and. Um, then what happens is those walls in between A and B open up, and that's how we do the 65, 70-piece orchestras, mm -hmm. which is great isolation. Everybody can see everyone. We have monitors for people in the booths and B. So um, this uh, studio, as you know, was built in 56, um, but this room was renovated in 1989 into 1990, and um, we had to make it so it could still fit the large orchestras that it was used to, so we built a couple of booths for um, singers or drummers, and um, we built a big control room for all the people that are in on the sessions that need to be in the control room. But to compensate for the space that we took since the 50s, we made those walls to Studio A and B open up, and that way we can do like a 75-piece orchestra. The doors open up. There's three sets of doors here. A set of doors on this side, as you can see, with carpeting on for soundproofing. There's a set of glass doors in the middle, and then another set of doors on the Studio B side that are exactly like these. And so during big scoring dates, like the Oscars and stuff, we actually open this whole thing wide open. This is our Yamaha Grand Piano that's uh, used on all the sessions. It's a real popular piano. Um, it was. Uh, Featured in a lot of music videos and a lot of sessions between Ray with Jamie Foxx and Brian Wilson and Bruce Hornsby played this piano and boy, Herbie Hancock, everybody we could imagine has been on sessions in this piano. So you've heard it on a lot of beautiful scores and soundtracks and records. While we're in here, before we leave, yeah. let's look at our walls. One of the things we did, uh, Jeff Cooper was the designer, is made, made it so we have three options for sound in here. We have a very hard surface, uh, which is the black side. We can go to a, a all wood surface, which is a, which is a bit softer sounding, or we can open them up, like you see here, where it's all fabric. So we have an option of basically black, formica, soft uh, fabric, and also over here, just a straight wood. So you can vary the room quite a bit, decay-wise and, and sonically. <laughs> And then, um, then we go into Studio B, which is our more vintage room. And John Mayer spent a lot of time there. He loves it. And so it's a really creative mix in there. Um, and the Neve, vintage Neve 8068 console. Oh, cool. But B is used a lot for just, just people uh, doing drums. It's, oh, a, it's yeah. a great drum room. And then that room is the same as it's, as it's been since 1956. For all intents so, and purposes. Well, yeah, the two walls. Yeah. yeah. Well, two of the walls are, are the same, <laughs> but those are the important walls because that's where they back the drums up to. Yeah. Uh, okay. so. so anyway, we're in Studio B now. We also have Nat King Cole's piano mm -hmm. that Paula can tell you more about. And this has been here since yeah. well, since well, the I opening. Mean, it's probably moved over from the old studios. Uh, that were on Melrose, so and Snack King Cole played it with his trio. You'll see pictures of him playing it, doing all his hits, and people love it when they come in here. They just love the feeling that Nat King Cole played on this piano, and it's a very nice sounding seven foot Steinway. Zed came in here and worked on this piano, and um, we've done just a lot of work with groups like you know Eric Clapton recorded this room, the Goo Goo Dolls, and uh, John Mayer. So um, Art was touching on opening the walls up for big orchestras, and we did Neil Young's Children of Destiny song, 
um, with the full orchestra and, and the band in the middle of the orchestra. And he got to, uh, did the whole song in one day. Studio B is our vintage room and here's our vintage 8068 console. It was a 32 in console and we bought another one and we had Fred Hill modify it at uh, Nashville. That This week we're going through and giving all the modules a sonic bath. Go through the console and clean all the modules in a sonic bath and that keeps the switches quiet and not scratchy and uh, again the idea is to keep it in great, great working order. On top of the stairs we put a little kitchen in for um, people who want to stay and be and not leave. Yep. And then we have um, print and barrel designed lounge and overdub boots. A lot of people do vocals up here. And as you can see, they can yep. see their bandmates speak to them yep. from above. <laughs> and then Studio C is our mix room or vocal overdub room. Um, and that has another 88R. And we're making some um, major advances in C of what we're doing for more moving mixing, surround mixing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we upgraded the monitors three years ago to PMC because it, it was a, 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 I'll call it a potpourri of, of speaker systems because they were inconsistent in all, in all three rooms. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I tend to be a person that is consistent, so we, we wanted to have, be able to go from one room to the other room, the other room and, and have it have it translate so that's the same reason we have an 88R in here and yeah. in C so you can track in here 88R and take take everything go in there and it all comes back the same. This is the newest renovation on the block in Studio C we designed Adobe Atmos room. Yeah, so all the speakers New that you see block. above us uh, are for over overheads there's actually 20 speakers in the room uh, three down each side and four across the back that are hidden behind cloth and then six overhead, and again, three across the front. And that's part of our Dolby Atmos mixing for film and for, and for music. If I were so blessed to be a singer on a major recording record and doing big band, I'd be in this booth, no matter who I was, and the drummer would be next door, and all the orchestra would be out in the main room. But this is where I would be singing. I've seen uh, Nally Cole sing on this mic, Barbra Streisand, Paul McCartney, Barry Manilow, Josh Groban, Michael Bublé. Um, some artists like to go outside and sing with the band, but this is the, you know, the room that uh, when you're with everybody else that you get isolation and you can get your good sound in this room by the way it's shaped and everything. It's a privileged legacy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like everything in, at the studio here, um, there's, there's a history to everything and then there's also a simultaneous newness to everything. The chambers, are almost mythological now, mm -hmm. out in my world, you know? And um, two things, is it easy to get to them? I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't there's, yeah. not, there's not too many pi pictures online. Yeah. And and what speakers are you putting in there? What mics are you putting in there? You talked earlier you, earlier, and you said there was, uh, they're different in different chambers, yeah, but the main well, chambers, the ones people use, what, what are the speakers and what are the mics? Well, I think, well they go, well, again, originally when they were built, because I have original drawings, original documentation of speaker placement, where they were 604Es uh, and LTIC, I think 81 microphones, I have to look at my notes, but, uh -huh. uh, and then uh, also voice to theater. And then over the so, years... In a way, somewhat generic things, Oh yeah, no, they were very generic. Uh, and then over the years, people... Uh, decided to put uh, some JBL drivers on some of the Altic horns. So right now I do have a list of what, what, what the match is, but I have a match of JBLs, Altic Lansing, Tannoy's. Uh, oh. it's, you know, they're, all, they're all a little bit different. Is there a fan favorite? Well, Al likes Chamber 4. Well, which, there you go. That's, that's you know, one which, I like. <laughs> it's reserved year round for him. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That's cool. But Al uses two chambers because he runs them in stereo, so he has two, two for them? No, no. It, uh, each, each chamber has two speakers and two microphones. Oh, okay. So that, that, that's how that, set, that sets up. So you can use the two speakers as mono or stereo. And again, they're, they're set up where they're splayed, hitting different walls. Uh, so, yeah, over the years, they have changed a, a, a little bit because, you know, you have, again, as I was saying earlier, you want to accommodate clients. So some clients are allowed to move microphones as long as I can move them back. But, uh, we have clients that book just to run tracks through the chambers. That's a lot it. of our business. I believe it. Yeah. Nothing can touch those chambers. There's, that, that's getting a very rare thing, a couple in Europe, of course we all know where, and, uh, and, and these, that's pretty much it yeah. as far as the, the larger ones. 
Um, and I don't think there's been any chambers around as old as ours. Yeah. I mean, no. you know, 60 maybe years old and underground, 20 feet underground. In fact, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Capitalist is the only studio owned by a label now in America. Yeah, U Universal owns us in Abbey Road, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, right now there's a resurgence um, in vinyl, and uh, you guys do still great mastering here. If I can take a second. Okay. Uh, the first record I ever did, and it was not very good, so I'm not going to say the name of it. I'd only been engineering about a month. <laughs> I sent it to, to, to uh, Wally Trogget Wally here. Trogget, yep. And yeah, uh, like he sent it back to me and said he couldn't master it. <laughs> He's like not going to take responsibility <laughs> yeah, to be on Yeah, there. and oh, he gave me some great. suggestions. I, yeah. I incorporated those suggestions. But yeah. uh, um, dear, dear man, and, and yeah. as are the entire staff here, but update me on, on how vinyl... Yeah is uh, incorporated into the into the system now and, and the yeah. importance of that. Uh, we had one uh, vinyl mastering, besides Wally, was Ron McMaster, mm -hmm. who did such classic records. Yeah, um, he's for, and he's been he, doing it for 35 years. But uh, we brought in uh, Ian in the tech team, and he restored an old uh, Neumann lathe, yeah, right? Which was Wally's lathe. Which is yeah. Wally's lathe, which cut uh, Dark Side of the Moon and uh, Saturday Night Fever. And... Um, Got, got Wait a minute. Dark Side of the Moon and Saturday Night Fever yeah, in the same yeah, sentence. Yeah, those were cut. Is that legal? I mean, can you do that? <laughs> okay, just check. And uh, we put uh, him on the second floor now, and he, he did like half of the uh, Blue Note oh, 75th with anniversary was. with Don Was. Yeah. Um, the remastering. Half of the remastering. Yeah, that so, was a great project. Yeah, so vinyl is a big thing for us. We're always busy with it. Here we go down the uh, mastering hallway. We're going to go into Ron McMaster's room. He has a cutting lathe, a Neumann. So once again, this is a vintage lathe uh, going back to, I would say, the 40s, I believe, this was originally built. And it's still used today. Ron still cuts. We actually have two, two lathes, one upstairs and one here. Uh, and they're used every, every day. There's no special modifications. It's uh, as it was when it uh, came out of, the, out, of the, uh, out of the crate originally. You made the statement a minute ago. I'm going to call you on it. Because I, I believe you're right. Not that it matters, you know, more than I do. But uh, um, how hard does take to get these days? I know that's a, a, a weird question, but... Um, we we have our sources to do it. There's we a did, source in Canada, right? Yeah, we, we had to uh, go to a company that had to... I think they got it out of Europe, too. Because when we did um, the, the new basement tapes, T-Bone Burnett wanted to use tape. I had to get a lot of tape from, from there. So mm -hmm. we have a constant source. People don't use it all the time. Sometimes they want to track uh, on 16 track, 2 inch, maybe just track domes mm -hmm. and transfer. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Well, I would say that it's the yeah. stuff out a little bit. Yeah. The, hard, the hardest part is consistency. Uh, you know, back in, the, back in the day when I was, you know, in studios, aligning tape machines, you know, you'd have, you know, batches of tape that, you know, you'd always buy a batch of tape for that project and align mm -hmm. for that project. Uh, and, you know, Go through and get rid of bias rocks and all those wonderful things. So I, I look at today as being it's just inconsistent because because I, I can I have taught my staff how to low noise bias using 20 hertz oh, okay. through 20 cycles and I learned that back at Record One with Val Gray right. and we used to go through because we had we were using Agpa tape and Agpa right. tape was noted for having bias rocks. Yeah, Sal's favorite tape. Yeah. So 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 you go through and you would bias so that for minimum bias rocks uh -huh. and then you'd go back and say okay I'm going say 15 IPS. Yeah, so that's 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 three dB over at at, at 10k, mm -hmm. and but I find today because I, when I check tape and low noise bias, if that's where the story is going, mm -hmm. it's inconsistent. Like then if you go back to say to 10k and you go, well, that would be three over. No, this batch is two and a quarter over. No, this mm -hmm. batch is two and a half over. So, mm -hmm. but you're but, still biasing at 100, 1k, and 10k. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Well, you so I still print tones, but I, I, when mm -hmm. I said bias, I always said bias using 20 cycles because oh, okay. that's how you get the lo lowest noise floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, taking into account headwear, tape tension, and you know all the elements of what you're makes. biasing for studios too. Yeah. Studio D, what a great studio! Isn't it great? It, it really is. It turned it's, into uh, something wonderful. You it's know? it's in in the grand tradition here at Capitol. Um, it's just a creative space. I mean, you just feel really good there. And I understand it's, you're staying pretty busy. You refurbished that need. It's been Correct. about a year doing it. Incredible job! How many switches did you have to replace? It was actually uh, probably maybe forty. It wasn't as bad as I'd expected. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, then you had low expectations. <laughs> you know, 
know. But where did it come from? Uh, that, that actually, that comes from uh, belongs to Chris Stewart, and I have it on loan, and I refurbished it for him. It came out of Chicago. It came out of Butcher Boy on the north side of Chicago, uh -huh. and he wanted he wanted me to re just go through it, and make sure it was hundred percent, hundred percent. And I kind of, as I started going through it, I just called him back and said, you know. Why don't we just restore this? Let's just go all the way on this. I what, said, what, what did you change about the center section? Uh, the center section uh, had been modified before I got it, and someone had, uh, it was in a more of a post application. Mm -hmm. So they took out the whole original center section, put in a bunch of IC switching and a bunch of, you know, basically op amp mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got the console, I, I basically looked at a bunch of pictures of other consoles and went, you know, that center section has to be restored to original. So what we did, because I had all the schematics, we restored the center section to original, only difference being in the original design, all the audio went through switches and went through pots. Gotcha, and yeah. So it obviously well, goes through pots, but all the switching is now on, on sealed relays. So this it just makes it much more stable and more current. Paula made you do that, right? It's a Neve 8058, 24-inch. Uh, yeah. Just so. Yeah. Is there a body that there's 13 floors in the building? There's only 12 in an E floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, don't, um, we don't count it as 13. <laughs> I know, but it's 13. You know what? Uh, there, there's just some things you can't shake from childhood, you know? I, I know that. I know. I mean, you know. You well, know. But well, let's put it this way. None of us have an office on the 13th floor. <laughs> on the E floor. On the E floor. <laughs> uh, another thing that that I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up is, is the mic collection. Mm -hmm. um, nothing starts without a mic, you know? And um, metaphorically speaking, um, we were talking and uh, I was looking at a, at a mic assignment sheet for its string section and my God, most people don't have that. In, mm -hmm. in three studios combined, the mic collection. Um, what, what are some of the centerpieces of your collection that, that, you, that, that some of the young kids coming in just idolize and have to use. Can you remember any? You can speak to that. Oh yeah, the, 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 on the Neumann U47, we have the classic like Frank Sinatra mic, so everybody uh -huh. wants to use that for their vocals. So that is an authentic mic that we have. And what kind of maintenance do, do you do on that microphone? I mean, mm -hmm. it's... It's, uh, it's just, it, actually that, that, that mic is fairly uh, trouble-free. Even the caps and everything, yeah. and the power supply? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say, well, the, I'll digress for Power supplies, I've gone back through all the 47s and 48s and, and rebuilt the power supplies in, uh, in, in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. We have gone through the power supplies, but the mics themselves tend to be very robust. I mean, I mean I've, I've never had, you know, we don't touch them unless someone says something, meaning that, wow. uh, but the capsules and stuff, uh, everything's been very, they're very stable. Yeah. I'm, sit I'm sitting here looking at a, Thirty to forty thousand dollar Fairchild. Um, how do you, you're supposed to change the tubes and those about every nine months? Do you? Uh, actually, I we how should I say? I I was always brought up leaving everything turned on all the time, uh, okay. and then. But that's more for tubes, though, right? Yeah, for tubes. But okay. even that, that being a two-piece here, but we we have been turning them off when they're not being used, just just for more longevity. Oh, it's, okay. It kind of goes against. You're getting older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of goes against my 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 thinking as I as I came up through the 45 years of in the industry of leaving things on. But it seems like if I'm not going to use it for two or three weeks, let's 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 save the tubes and you know let's you know, turn it off and we'll turn it on and let us set for like you know six hours before we use it so it warms up and stabilizes. But I, I have been turning tube gear on and off more than I than I used to. Oh, okay. Paula, uh, without naming names. Give me some stories about uh, some of your experiences here that, that the listener might be oh, surprised well, about. Going back to 93, you know, one of my greatest experiences working with Frank Sinatra yeah. and his big band and, you know, just running into him in the hallway. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, Phil Ramon was producing it and he uh, he had built a booth. We, we can make shift these booths in the oh. middle because he wanted to be in the middle of the orchestra. Uh -huh. So he made a booth with the door and a little roof and Frank walked in and said, I'm not going in there and left. Are you serious? <laughs> mm -hmm. The man was a like, weird Ooh. question that I should know, but did he, did he speak fluent Italian? I can't really say. I, he you didn't never speak hear Italian about that, do you? At the sessions. <laughs> really? Well, so give, me, give me a story. Give me another story. <laughs> well, that was it. He left and then he came back a few days later and, um, you know, they talked him into it. You know, we didn't. We were on the edge of our seat, wondering what was going to happen the next day or so. 
And um, I get to meet him. He gave me a kiss. What Give else me a juicy that? story. A <laughs> juicy? It was a juicy. Give me a TMZ story. <laughs> it was a kiss on the lips. No kidding. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a whole story, but anyway, I'm not going to go into that. Are you that. wearing the same lipstick as you did? No. Same lips. Oh, okay. Um, she, you know, she hasn't washed her lips since. I know. That's what I said when everybody, I'm like, just kiss Frank, anybody, you know. Um, and um, we had great stories when, like, I first started, Paul McCartney was doing an interview for the company, and uh -huh. that was a shock to me, you know, to be here two weeks and have Paul McCartney come in, which is what I dreamed of. And But then he's been in so many times. He, he had Al Schmidt, Tommy the Puma, produce his Kisses on the Bottom record, uh -huh. and... Uh, he did that, and then he came back. Uh, we got Art over at the holidays to help us put this new console in, and in within a couple of weeks we were doing Paul McCartney live to the world on iTunes, wow. and um, with Diana Krall. live kisses and shooting a video at the same wow. time with Diana Krall, Joe Walsh, a uh, sit-in audience, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, live to the world, and then he also decided to uh, accept a star outside on Vine. Oh wow! <clears throat> so it was. One of those days where it's like I have my cup full. When you mentioned live, it, uh, I remember the, the Oscars. You guys do some stuff here with the Oscars during yeah. the uh, ceremonies. Is it is it actually live or is it pre-recorded well, stuff? It's, we've been it's doing the Oscars orchestral for, things, right? Yeah, well, we've been doing the Oscars for seventeen years. It's all the um, all the pre-records, all the rehearsals, and then it's um, all the songs that are nominated for best song, which bring in like a great array of artists yeah. like Celine Dion, Bocelli, The Weeknd, mm -hmm. you know, all the new uh, acts that are coming up, you know, Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. And um, they've always done that with Bill Conti and mm -hmm. then with Bill Ross and Harold Wheeler. But f a few years ago, the product producers of the show wanted to use the elevator on the stage, so they had to find a way to do the orchestra live from Capitol. So we ran fiber lines to the, to the Dolby and we were actually live for the whole show, so everybody came in with their tuxedos. We put a red carpet down, we brought in an Oscar statue, and did the show for three and a half hours. Were you here then, Art? Yes, I was here. Was that a years. nightmare for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Logistically, we had to really plan ahead, because we're dealing with AT&T with the fiber, and, and, and with the encoders and decoders, and dealing with lag time between here and there, okay. uh, which now is down to, it's like seven milliseconds. So That's it's, it's, you know, so it's, it's so. Basically, like, we did it two, years, or, it two or, years in a row or three, three, years, in a row, three, three years, years in a row. And yeah. the last year we did it, we had you know, the orchestra live here with singers yeah. was, uh, you know, live live at the Dolby. Yeah. And, and the sync was, was, was perfect. Yeah, and out here with the, with the partition gone? Yeah, the, yeah. Audi the orchestra was in Studio A and B all Studio together. Studio A and B. Yeah. We put oh, okay. strings in B, yeah. rhythm in, in A, but, and, horns, yeah. uh, and Tommy Vicari's engineering. But, I mean, again... As an in, from an engineering standpoint, it's great because you have a controlled environment where obviously if you go to the venue, you're dealing with an orchestra that's in a pit, mm -hmm. which is not the, the best way to mic an orchestra. Right. Yeah, and we had the production, you know, the pr producers and production in the Studio C, so they were nearby. And most importantly, they brought in their own power. So we actually shut down the build, building power, brought in um, their company. And tied to their power, and then you know, yeah. had to it was a big UPS truck, a big yeah. UPS truck and generators. So just in case power went out, we kept we kept rolling through. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Did was, you enjoy that? That was great. Yeah, I held my breath for three hours. It was great. <laughs> uh, what's the process for hiring interns and, and assistants and things like that? You know, we look for good attitudes, good experience. You know, we look at the schools that they went to, but they usually set up and set up division when they're just learning to do runs make coffee clean the rooms and then we slowly <clears throat> get them used to being in the studio setting up mics and it's usually basically like we've got two guys that have become assistant engineers they came from from the setup staff uh, and that was like a five-year process for them okay. three, three to five years i mean five years is generally before you get to slide into that chair behind you where you sit and, and run pro tools for a session mm -hmm. or for a major engineer it's it's but the whole idea is is, is to teach the craft of miking orchestras and miking rhythm sections, which is becoming fairly rare these days. I know you run a tight ship. How many people does it take to run this place and to staff it? Well, basically, it's, it's right around thirty-one, I believe. It's like we have, we have we have six setup slash runners. We have five assistant engineers. 
Um, who can also be house engineers too. Who can also house yeah. engineers. Yeah. Uh, I got four in the technical staff, including myself. So probably four and a half. I noticed you never said the word intern. You don't. No. Well, the uh, internship program has changed, and Universal Capital does a whole program where they actually pay the interns, and they do a program where they have to go to different departments and create a, a, um, a development or plan. Oh, with okay. with people who work for the company. That's great. So, so they Very pick cool. departments to do it too. Very but cool. in, in, in generally speaking, we don't have like you know as a, a tradition, a lot of students like would, would have interns they didn't pay. Yeah. And going back to when I first started managing studios at Record One, I always wanted to pay people that were on the staff. I mean, I, I had this fundamental feeling that look, if you're going to be here, yeah, learning, you, I should pay you something. That's great. That's how it you know. That's great. Yeah. So. Man, the more and more I learn about Capitol Studios, the more and more I get impressed, even more and more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when I'm here. It just feels so special. I well, appreciate you guys. Well, thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Yeah.